Good afternoon. I'm going to start by asking you a rhetorical question. How many of you know? How many of you have or know of someone who has extra kilogram that is trying or rather struggling to shed? <coughs> I didn't expect you to raise your hands. It's a rhetorical question. <laughs> but still, you guys are not alone. Overweight and obesity are worldwide pandemic, affecting around 3 billion adults around the world. And if we zoom into our region, well, the picture doesn't look any brighter. I have put here the USA as a reference because it's usually the country that is portrayed in the media as the one mostly affected by this burden. But as we can see, many countries in our region not only compare to the US, but even exceed the US in terms of obesity prevalence. And if you're looking for Lebanon, we're right there with around one third of the adult population obese. Now the problem is not merely aesthetic. It's not just looking fat in that dress or looking flabby in that swimsuit. Overweight and obesity are among the main risk factors for the top five killers of the world, like cardiovascular diseases, <coughs> diabetes, <coughs> cancer, among others. And while the solution seems simple, eat less calories than what your body needs, and you lose weight. And despite all the weight loss diets and drugs that are out there that are trying to help us solve this equation, the reality looks different. Recent research have shown that the main issue is not losing the weight, but actually maintaining the lost weight. This is why 65% of the people that lose weight will eventually gain it back within three years. And if you have lost weight on a crash diet, you have a 95% chance of gaining it back. This is why obesity rates are still on the rise. They have doubled since the years 1980s, and they are expected to skyrocket by the year 2030. Now, I'm not here to discourage or depress you. This is not why I'm here. We have enough reasons in the region to take care of that. I'm here to share with you a new approach for looking at the problem, a new idea worth spreading. This is why my research team, made up of faculty from the American University of Beirut and the Lebanese American University, decided to stop actively coming up with answers, but instead looking around for the answer that might be right there. And all we had to do is to listen. We adopted an approach that is commonly used in the health and uh, education discipline, which is to listen or involve the entity that is directly linked to the outcome. In the case of health, it is a patient-centered approach, and in the case of education, it's a student-centered approach. In our case, we adopted a body-centered approach, because it is the body that is the entity directly affected by obesity. So if we listen to our body, what does it tell us? We have evolved technologically and industrially so fast, but our genes are still our ancestors. So obesity is the mere consequence of our body not being able to cope with this evolution. So your minds might be able to deal with the latest iPhone or the latest app, but this doesn't mean that your body can process modern day diet. Besides, since our body still has our ancestors' imprints, we had to listen to our ancestors. And the closest living ones are obviously our elders. When asked about their lifestyle, our elders tell us that they used to eat more whole, natural food, less processed food, like more whole grains, more fruits and vegetables, more dairy, more fish, less red meat. So we figured, Adopting such a lifestyle will help people lose weight. Now, to clarify, we're not the pioneers in that. And we're not trying to take credits for that. Many researchers have already established that our ancestors' diet, let it be the Mediterranean diet, or the paleo diet, or the organic food-based diet, are effective in fighting obesity and fighting diseases. However, unfortunately, we do not live in our ancestors' days. 
The modern food availability and food industry are so much different. And again, the main issue is maintaining such a lifestyle and maintaining the lost weight. If you go down to Hamria, you don't see a fish market. You barely see someone selling fruits and vegetables. If you're hungry and you're in Hamra, well, you find this. So what my team was the pioneer in and did differently is actually bridging those two worlds. We listened to our body, we listened to our ancestors, but we wanted practical, sustainable solutions. So we went back to our ancestors' diet and we looked for the elements or the nutrients that are different than the modern day diet. And we stumbled upon phosphorus. Phosphorus is an essential mineral that interestingly, but not surprisingly, is needed by our body to process energy in and out of it. To illustrate things more visually, this is the Krebs cycle also known as my student's worst nightmare. <laughs> the Krebs cycle is the main cycle in our body that is needed to produce energy. And as you can see, at every step where we have energy production, phosphorus is needed. So phosphorus is abundant in our ancestor diet, but not in our modern day diet. It's found in foods such as legumes, beans, whole grains, dairy, fish, and again, if we want to maintain such a diet and such a lifestyle, it's barely impossible given the modern food availability or even different farming techniques. Now, you might ask me, why did we choose phosphorus? There are so many other nutrients found in our ancestors' diet that are different than the modern day diet. Well, you are correct. There is calcium, fibers, vegetable protein, However, these nutrients were extensively studied in the literature. Some were found with positive effects on obesity, others didn't have an effect, but none was a breakthrough. So what have we done so far? We have added phosphorus to the modern day uh, high fat, high sugar diet, and we fed it to humans. And we were happily surprised. Our results are not only promising, but consistent. Phosphorus supplementation was associated with a significant weight loss, especially from the belly region, because it's the belly region that's directly linked to diseases. Lower appetite, higher energy expenditure, and most importantly, better blood results that will prevent the development of diseases. We painted the idea our idea and our research gained international visibility, and our ultimate objective is to supplement modern diet with phosphorus and hope to fight obesity. Now, hold your hostess. Some people might be thinking, where do we find phosphorus? <laughs> it's very important to note something. Our research is still in its infancy. We still have to figure out so many different things, like the right form and dosage of phosphorus, the interaction with other nutrients, the timing with meals, and the exact mechanisms of action. Also, larger scale studies are needed to confirm our results. So phosphorus pills are still not on the market, guys. But we also believe that phosphorus is not the magic pill. It's just one factor of so many other factors found in our diet and in our environment that affect obesity. But what do I want to leave you with? I am an expert in nutrition and public health, but I believe that the model and the methodology that we use can be applied to our modern day problems. I think to solve these problems, we should listen. Listen to the people that are directly suffering from the problem. We should also listen to our ancestors and go back in history that repeats itself because answers might just be lying there. And we have to be pragmatic by bringing the secret elements from the history and incorporate it in our modern time and hope to obtain better outcomes. Thank you.